Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today I have a very different video for you. We're gonna revisit the new age. We're gonna listen to Alan Watts, who used to be an English writer, speaker and self-styled philosophical entertainer known for interpreting and popularizing Japanese, Chinese and Indian traditions of Buddhist, Taoist and Hindu philosophy for the Western audience. And Alan Watts will make the bold claim in his video to say you are God. Keep in mind, this video is from way, way back. Alan Watts died in the 70s. Nevertheless, he was a revolutionary, so to speak, for Eastern mysticism. He brought all of those Buddhist, Zen Buddhist concepts over to the States. So with no further ado, let's have a look. You can't control your thoughts. You can't control your feelings because there is no controller. You are your thoughts and your feelings. And they're running along, running along, running along. Just sit and watch. I would disagree. It, of course, depends on which level you're looking at the whole thing. But ultimately, we are not our thoughts. The thoughts are simple distractions. You don't know where they are coming from. They enter your awareness. But if anything, I would say that we are that awareness and not the thoughts. Here they go. You're still breathing, aren't you? Yep. Still growing your hair? No, not still anymore. Still seeing and hearing? Are you doing that? I mean, is, is breathing something that you do? <laughs> do that depends as well. Within my psychedelic experiences, and again, guys, disclaimer, I'm not saying this to advertise psychedelic experiences. I'm simply warning about their use because I went through those experiences. I had a dramatic trip on Oscar where my body stopped breathing. Usually that's an automatism. Usually the body breathes by itself. But this time around, I had to focus and make my body breathe by myself. The other day, I told that to the participants around me and they said, oh, wow, that's actually really, really bad. Most people, they die. Yeah, thank you very much for not warning me prior to this. But that being said, ultimately, yes, even your body can get into a state where you will have to control those automatisms. See, I mean, do you organize the operation? of your eyes and know exactly how to work those rods and cones in the retina? Do you, do you do that? No. It's a happening. Sure. It happens. So you can feel all this happening. Your breathing is happening. Your thinking is happening. Your feeling is happening. Your hearing, your seeing. The clouds are happening across the sky. The sky is happening blue. The sun is happening shining. There it is, all this happening. And may I introduce you, this is yourself. That to clarify for my audience here is the doctrine of non-duality. Ultimately, that everything you see within existence is yourself, that there is no separation at all. Some Sufi masters came to the same conclusion by saying Al-Haq, the ultimate reality, one of the 99 names of Allah, means that only Allah, only God, is ultimately real and nobody else is there. That ultimate reality is the eternal reality. Everything else is temporal. We're going to vanish. We're not living on forever, but we're intimately tied with God. Their claim is that everything is God. Some call this pantheism, but there is another version that is called monism. Ultimately, it proclaims that everything is one and that everything happens within the mind of God, so to speak. If we take an example, even though this will never do God justice of ourselves, imagining ourselves as a dreamer. When we have a dream, within that dream, you have plenty of characters, different people, different animals sometimes, but in the end it is all you. It is a fabric of your imagination. And the claim here of certain Zen Buddhists is that God has this dream ultimately, but it's not real. This is what Hindus call Maya. It is the greatest delusion, so to speak. God himself dreams everything into existence. So therefore, technically, yes, everything is God, but at the same time it is not God at all because it is temporal. This begins to be. A I hope this made sense. Of who you really are. And that's the way you function. You function by happening, that is to say, by spontaneous occurrence. 
And this is not a state of affairs that you should realize. I cannot possibly preach it to you because the minute you start thinking, I should understand that, this is this stupid notion again of I should bring it about when there is no you to bring it about. See, that's why I'm not preaching. You can only preach to egos. All I, I can do is to talk about what is. It amuses me to talk about what is because it's wonderful. And that reminds me yet again of the Quran. I quoted this so many times, Allah guides who he wills. And this would even confirm this doctrine here of enlightenment, of awakening. Because even if your purpose here should be to awaken, then it would be in God's hands anyways. It would be happening because God ordained it so. I love it and therefore I like to talk. If I get paid for it, then I make my living. And sensible people get paid for doing what they enjoy doing. Exactly right. So this is not on a, you see, this is the whole approach here is not to convert you, not to make you over, not to improve you, but for you to discover that if you really knew the way you are, things would be, would be sane. But you see, you can't do that. You can't make that discovery. This reminds me of the Bible of ourselves. We can't do anything. Your own way. So long as you think I'm I. So long as that hallucination blocks it. And the hallucination disappears only in the realization of its own futility. Again, as a clarification here to my audience, the delusion of I within this context means that we have the delusion of being a self. But the doctrine here is about the no self, the no duality, where the self is trapped within the illusion of being a separate entity. But in non-dualism, the ultimate reality is that there is no separation, that I am imagining to be Bobby and you're imagining to be another person but ultimately we're exactly one there is no separation at all and we will find that out once we die or once we awaken that is the theory when at last you see you can't do it you cannot make yourself over you cannot really control your own mind see when we try to control the mind you can't a lot of Yoga teachers try to get you to control your own mind, mainly to prove to you that you can't do it. There's nothing, you know, a fool who persists in his folly will become wise. So they, what they do is they speed up the folly. Fair. And so you get concentrating. And uh, you can have a certain amount of superficial and initial success by a process commonly called self-hypnosis. And you can think you're making progress. And a good teacher will let you go along that way for a while until he really throws you with one. Why are you concentrating? See, Buddhism works this way. Buddha said, if you suffer, you suffer because you desire. And your desires are either unattainable or always being disappointed or something. Yes, I would agree with that statement as well, of course, because ultimately your suffering does come from the desire to have something that you're not having right now. It could be anything, it could be material, it could be love. You're always desiring something that is on the other side. And if you don't get it, you are suffering. It's a very juvenile state, of course. It's like the baby crying for the pacifier. Cut out desire. So those disciples went away and they stamped on desire, jumped on desire, cut the throat of desire and threw out desire, but then they came back and Buddha said, but you are still desiring not to desire. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> they wanted how to get rid of that. So when you see that that's nonsense, there naturally comes over you a quietness. It's essentially acceptance, or within Islam it would be called submission to God. In seeing that you cannot control your mind, you realize there is no controller. What you took to be the thinker of thoughts is just one of the thoughts. What you took to be the feeler of the feelings, which was that chronic muscular strain, is just one of the feelings. What you took to be the experiencer of experience is just part of the experience. So there isn't any 
thinker of thoughts, feeler of feelings, we, we get into that bind because we have a grammatical rule that verbs have to have subjects. Yes, absolutely. Yet again, as I said in previous videos, Buddhism, for example, tries to transcend everything and ultimately tries to transcend Buddhism in itself. You understand that you're the observer of your thoughts. You're not your thoughts, you're just the observer. But then he claims that there is another level where the observer and the observed merge and only experience is left, only isness, only happening. And the funny thing about that is that verbs are processes and subjects are nouns, which are supposed to be things. How does a noun start a verb? How does a thing put a process into action? Obviously it can't. We can't do that. My claim is, of course, that God put everything into motion. But we always insist that there is this th subject called the knower. And without a knower, there can't be knowing. Well, that's just a grammatical rule. It isn't a rule of nature. In nature, there's just knowing, like you're feeling it. And I have to say you are feeling it as if you were somehow different from the feeling. When I say I am feeling, what I mean is, there is feeling here. When I say you are feeling, I mean there is feeling there. I have to say even there is feeling. What a cumbersome language we have. Chinese is easier. You don't have to put all that in. Well, you can say things twice as fast in Chinese as you can in any other language. Well, anyway, when you come to see that you can do nothing, that the play of thought, of feeling, etc. just goes on by itself as a happening. Then you are in a state which we will call meditation. And slowly, without being pushed, your thoughts will come to silence. That is to say, all the verbal symbolic chatter going on in the skull. Don't try and get rid of it because that will again produce the illusion that there's a controller. Just, it, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, and finally it gets tired of itself and bored and stops. And so then there's a silence. Yes, and this is why I believe that thoughts are almost separate to ourselves, because they enter into our awareness and they're doing their own part. You're not controlling them, they are trying to control you. And once you detach yourself from those thoughts, then they kind of fade out. But before that, you cannot do that at all. Every time you try to stop thinking, you will think even more. And this is a deeper level of meditation. And in that silence, you suddenly begin to see the world as it is. And you don't see any past. And you don't see any future. You don't see any difference between yourself and the rest of it. That's just an idea. You can't put your hand on the difference between myself and you. Yet again, I have to speak about my past experiences. Disclaimer again, dear YouTube, please don't strike me. Please don't delete my channel. This is just for educational purposes. This is something that I experienced within a legal context. I was in a country where I was legal. So please keep that in mind. When I did I did it in the Netherlands where my are legal as well. Please keep that in mind. This is just for educational purposes. So in one of my breakthrough experiences, I merged with my surroundings. My awareness merged with my surroundings. You have to imagine it like this. Imagine the body to be like a water bottle and now you're filling it up with water. However, next thing that is happening, there is a crack in the water bottle and out of a sudden all of that water rushes out. However, that water bottle prior to this experience was within the ocean. So now the water rushing out becomes one with the ocean and that's truly how it felt during that experience i was sitting in front of a wall and all of a sudden i couldn't see a difference between myself and that wall then i started walking around and i couldn't see a difference between me and the whole house with me and the whole country everything was simply one and my point of awareness prior to that experience that is probably 
roughly around here was an illusion. You can train this through meditation as well. When you're meditating, you can shift your awareness. At first, it will be in your head. Then you can shift it to your heart. You can shift it to your hands simply by concentrating on those limbs. And then the breakthrough experience goes further and you even leave your body and everything around you can become you in that sense. And to end the statement with a disclaimer yet again, I'm not saying that this experience therefore is true. I'm simply stating that I had those experiences. You can't put your hand on the difference between myself and you. You know, you can't blow it, you can't bounce it, you can't pull it. It's just an idea. You can't find any material body because material body is an idea. So is spiritual body. This is somebody's philosophical notions. See, reality isn't material. That's an idea. Reality isn't spiritual. That's an idea. Reality is... So, we find, if I've got to put it back into words, that we live in an eternal now. Yes. But this theory is yet again a theory, of course. The eternal now, where is it happening? Is it happening within this creation? Is the universe eternally now? With that, it would mean, of course, that the universe is eternal, which then would lead to pantheism. This is the main difference between pantheism and monism. Monism does not claim that the universe is eternal. And out of the theological view, if the universe is eternal, then we have the issue that the universe itself becomes core equal to God. Time in the world, because you've got all the time there is, which is now. And uh, you are this universe. And you feel a strange feeling when, when, when ideas don't define the differences. You feel that other people's doings are your doings. And that makes it very difficult to blame other people. If you're not sophisticated theologically, you may, of course, run screaming in the streets and say that you're God. In a way, that's what that's happened to Jesus, because he wasn't sophisticated theologically. He only had Old Testament biblical theology behind him. Yes, so this is ultimately the conclusion that most New Agers come to then. Jesus was an enlightened guy. Jesus was somebody that went down the path of enlightenment. He got the realization and therefore he realized he is God. That was the blasphemy he was crucified for. That is the New Agers perspective. So now Alan Watts even goes further and claims that Jesus wasn't well versed in theology, even though we exactly know that Jesus within his Jewish upbringing had extreme theological knowledge, especially for his H. Had Hindu theology, he could have put it more subtly, but uh, it was only that rather primitive theology of the Old Testament. <laughs> See, that's the point. It is always the same. Ultimately, they are appealing to Buddhism and Hinduism, which is way, way older and therefore by that standard already more primitive than the Abrahamic faiths. And then they're going to claim, no, the Abrahamic faiths are actually primitive and Buddhism and Hinduism are so true, so right, so enlightened. That always was said. the conception of God as a monarchical boss. And you can't go around and say, I'm the boss's son. <laughs> if you're going to say, I'm God, you must allow it for everyone else, too. But this was a heretical idea from the point of view of Hebrew theology. And so what they did with Jesus was they pedestalized him. That means kicked him upstairs so that he wouldn't be able to influence anyone else. And how do you know all of this, right? And uh, only you may be God. And um, that stopped the gospel cold right at the beginning. It couldn't spread. Well, anyway. But it spread after all. This is therefore to say that the transformation of human consciousness through meditation is frustrated. So long as we think of it in terms of something that I myself can bring about by some kind of wangle, by some sort of gimmick. Because you see that leads to endless games of spiritual one-upmanship and of 
guru competitions of my guru is more effective than your guru my yoga is faster than your yoga i'm more aware of myself than you are i'm humbler than you are i'm sorrier for my sins than you are i love you more than you love me there is interminable goings on about which people fight and wonder whether they are a little bit more evolved than somebody else and so on all that can just fall away and then we get this strange feeling that we have never had you see in our lives except occasionally by accident some people get a glimpse that we are no longer this poor little stranger and afraid in a world it never made but that you are this universe and you are creating it at every moment because you see it starts now it didn't begin in the past there was no past see if the universe began in the past when that happened it was now see well it's still now and this is exactly the ego trap that i'm talking about because even if you subscribe to monism which i do partially you would have the distinction between creator and creation you would understand that the creator is the eternal aspect of yourself and that the creation is the temporal aspect of yourself yet again as the dreamer as i described as a thought i bobby have a thought is the thought truly me you could say so if you wanted for the sake of the argument but at the same time this thought is fleeing me and it's going out of existence it's not here in the now any longer and the same will apply to every single human being and therefore there is a huge distinction between creator and creation which in my opinion is absolutely missed with this explanation and the universe is still beginning now and it's trailing off like the wake of a ship from now in the wake of the ship fades out so does the past you can look back there to explain things but the explanation disappears you never find it there things are not explained by the past they're explained by what happens now that creates the past and it begins here Yes, and this is a issue that I was having with Christianity because the truth claim within Christianity, the basis of the faith, is a historical claim. The allegiance to Christianity is proclaimed by saying that Jesus got crucified ultimately, that you accept Jesus dying for your sins and that you accept that Jesus is Lord. With Islam, on the other hand, if you look at the Shahada, yes, there is a temporal statement, which is that Muhammad is the messenger, but at the same time, you have an eternal statement. The eternal statement is that there is no God but God. And that is a truth claim that can be found within the now as well. It holds true within the now. That's the birth of responsibility. Because otherwise, you can always look over your shoulder and say, well, I'm the way I am because my mother dropped me. And she dropped me because she was neurotic because her mother dropped her. <laughs> Now, away we go back to Adam and Eve or to a disappearing monkey or something. We never get at it. But in this way, you're, you're faced with it. You're doing all this. And that's an extraordinary shock. So, cheer up. You can't blame anyone else for the kind of world you're in. And if you know, you see that I, in the sense of the person the front, the ego, it really doesn't exist, then it won't go to your head too badly if you wake up and discover that you're God. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. I agreed with many things, I disagreed with a few as well. Ultimately, no matter how you want to phrase it, if you come to the conclusion to word I am God, you always end up in the ego partition because the ego partition, your frontal lobe, is wording exactly that. And with that comes an attachment, comes a construct, and like that you're falling into delusion. That is my personal opinion. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about About this how do you see those metaphysical claims especially as muslims as christians as jews but if we have buddhists zen buddhists or new agers here on board please let me know how you see this exact subject of being god All right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below as always may god bless you all much love and peace